Hello, welcome to this session introducing a virtual attribute feature that we shipped with Access Manager 4.2. What virtual attributes allows an administrator to do is to go to a remote LDAP or SQL database to retrieve attributes that are not necessarily available in the user store that the user authenticated against. Historically, we could do this with previous versions of Access Manager, but it always involved uh, developing some custom uh, classes. So either a custom auth class or an external attribute class. With NAM 4.2, we can do it with an out-of-the-box solution. Not only can we retrieve the attributes from the remote store, but we can also manipulate the attributes coming back. For example, if we want to search for a particular string and replace it with another one, we could do that. If we want to concatenate, remove substring, convert to uppercase, lowercase, there are built-in JavaScript functions that allow you to do that. You can also create your own JavaScript, custom JavaScript code, to do anything that's not uh, available in the predefined list of, of transformations. What's typically driven this use case in the past has been uh, applications that needed not just an attribute, but additional information with that attribute. Uh, the typical example would have been with Outlook Web Access, where Outlook Web Access, <clears throat> when you're trying to single sign on, requires the AD domain with the, uh, the username appended to it. By default, we could retrieve the username, but we couldn't manipulate the data to send the the uh, AD domain with the username. Now with virtual attributes and the attribute manipulation, we can do that. And here's an example where we have a user's email address that comes back as john at novell.com. And what we want to do is we want to uh, extract out the user, i.e. john, and pre-append it with the ID colon string. Another example would have been Amazon Web Services. This is in a, a SAML environment where Amazon Web Services expects an attribute that includes a number of different properties associated with it. So what we can do is we can retrieve the user-specific information from um, the user store, and then we can add or uh, manipulate the data to include additional information that the backend SP may need. In terms of setting it up, we have to go into the IDP server. It's all done at the IDP server, and we go to the shared settings tab. And under the shared settings tab, there is a data source and a virtual attributes tab. The data source is the user store that we're going to retrieve the remote attribute from. So in this case here, what I have is the user is going to authenticate against a local e-directory LDAP store. And I have an AD store that I'm going to add uh, where I'm going to retrieve some additional information. You'll also notice here that you can put in a, a database. So that could be an SQL or an Oracle database where you can retrieve backend attributes from. So if we go into the LDAP user store, I'll put in uh, ad uh, vert at LDAP, LDAP store. Uh, the directory type is Active Directory. The username, uh, I'm not a fast typer, so I just go over here. Is this. This is basic LDAP uh, information that we're putting in. Okay, we put in the location and IP address. This is 172. 172. Use the secure LDAP port for this AD server. I'm going to put in the search context, so I need to add a search context, which is where my users are located. There's a nice tool as well that allows you to test whether or not your configuration actually uh, is accurate or not. And I've got the green sign there, which is nice. The next stage now is to go into uh, the virtual attributes section. And in the virtual attributes section, we have two areas here. A virtual attribute, which is the virtual attribute that we're going to inject in the policy, but also the attribute source, where we're going to evaluate our virtual attribute from. 
So in this case here, the attribute source is, we're going to put it in, uh, we'll call um, What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, re <coughs> retrieve a title attribute from the remote user store, and I'm going to manipulate that. So uh, title from AD. Uh, the data source is the one that I've just added there in the previous step. Now I'm going to have my input parameters. So my input parameters, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to extract uh, an LDAP attribute from my currently authenticated user, and I'm going to generate an LDAP search request into the AD store to see if I find a matching user in the back end uh, AD user store. And if I do, I'm going to generate an output, which in this case is going to be the title, which I will get back to my NAM IDP server, and I can then go and manipulate that title. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for the LDAP mail attribute. I can find. LDAP mail, and I'm going to going to provide an LDAP filter, which is going to take this mail attribute. And just it's going to take the um, email address of the user that I have currently authenticated to. Uh, the IDP server with, and it's going to generate this LDAP request into the back end to see if it can identify a local user over there. <clears throat> and what it will do then is it's going to send an LDAP attribute back, an LDAP title attribute for that user from AD. There is a nice uh, utility which allows us to actually verify whether uh, there is a, an available attribute on the back end. So I can put in here, I can simulate what I would expect the user to log in with over here, so I have uh, ncashnoval.com, and I'll run the test utility, and it's going to use the LDAP request that I put in there, the LDAP filter, to make sure that an existing attribute exists over in the back end. Oops, I think I flat fingered the password there. Perfect, and there is the title that will be returned. Uh, in this particular case. So I'll go out and save that. So now I can go finally to virtual attributes and within the virtual attributes section now I'm going to create the virtual attribute. So I'm going to call it the title. And this should now be available uh, for my local policies, assuming it works for my local policies. So I'll put this in. <coughs> Selection input parameters in this case here I'm going to have to select I should see the attribute source that I created here there is the attribute source from the previous step and then do I want to do a modification or do I maybe what I'll do is I'll do a search function and I'll search for uh, searching right AD and I'll put that way get rid of D. And I also have uh, down here, I can actually view the contents of the script that's going to be executed. So this is a JavaScript. So in here, under the functions here, you have a predefined list of functions. And of course, you can write your own under the last one there, advanced JavaScript, you can write your own one there. So in here, I'll just save this out. And now I should be ready to go. Uh, I have a simple SAML SP setup where I've got a user store. So I'm going to go into, uh, bigger part, into attribute sets here. And I'm going to go to an existing attribute set that I'm using for a SAML provider. And now I'm going to create a new attribute set. And hopefully the virtual attribute should be available from my drop down. There is the virtual attribute V title. And I just won't map it. I'm just going to add that. And not only will I add that, but I'm going to go to the IDP configuration. And I will send the two attributes over to my simple SAML SP. I'll go in here. 
under attributes where I currently send the title. Now I'll send both the title, which is the local title from the LDAP store that I've authenticated to, as well as the virtual title, which is the one that I've gone and retrieved the attribute from the remote user store. So I apply that update. Uh, I'll update that right now. And we just make sure that everything applies without any problems. The next step now is to go over here. From there, and I'll enter my credentials. And I will generate an assertion back, and I see uh, both the local title and the rewritten LDAP uh, title from the remote AD LDAP server. The remote title was uh, AD Waster, and I used some JavaScript to actually manipulate that data. Um, and we can also go back, if we want, to the SAML tracer, and we can actually view the contents of the assertion in here with the SAML tracer tool. We go into SAML, and we look down to, to the attribute statement at the bottom, and we should see the two attributes there. So there's the first attribute, name title, and the value waster, and then the second one is the vTitle virtual attributes. Mm -hmm.